Hey, my name is Tyler, aka The Marketing Bully. Welcome to this quick five minute tutorial. I'm going to show you how to design one of these slot machine style graphics um, in Canva that you can use inside of an email campaign just like this. We ran this campaign for St. Patrick's Day and it did about $1,200. So I'm super excited to share with you today. All right, so we're gonna go to Canva click create design and choose Twitter posts. Uh, typically for my images at the top, I always choose a uh, Twitter post. The uh, graphic that they have for email header is just a little bit too small for my liking. It's really more of like a preference thing, right? All right, so first we're going to pick squares to where our um, graphics are going to roll from. And you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of a room in between each of them. If you want text above like this, then you'll need to do a, a larger graphic. If you have Canva Pro, this is easy to resize. Just touch a uh, resize and magic touch and go to custom size. And then we're going to make the height bigger. All right, and then we're just going to resize this design. Now we can bring down this box. Uh, we want the inside of our box to be white. Uh, there is an additional square around the perimeter of this. Um, you can make the inside of the box colored and then change the uh, border to be white. It's 100% up to you. Uh, always make sure that you use your brand colors, though. That, that's what's most important. My brand colors are these uh, natural tone, earthy colors right here. And so I'm going to do some uh, variation of them. I'm going to bring down the opaqueness just a little bit. All right, now that I have a, a square rectangle that I like, I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to make some columns. I want my columns to be uh, fairly centered into the page. So just drag, click, and then drag across, and you can highlight and group all of them. I don't want to group them yet. All right. Um, when you're choosing what you want to go inside to make it look like it's actually spinning, choose elements that are relevant to your brand. So for example, I work in marketing. Um, I do social media uh, content creation, video marketing, blogging. Um, I teach people how to make money from email marketing, from SMS marketing. And so all of the elements that I choose are going to be relevant to that. This client though, for example, they do skincare and their brand is like honey and um, natural baby content and so we focused on like using honey like elements of honey and bees and hives and flowers and stuff and then also the uh, St. Patrick's uh, clover for luck right all right so for mine um, when people win I want it to be um, something to do with money so in the elements I'm going to search for money let's see I'll do like a gold coin. So once we get it into the space, we're going to uh, shrink it down to size. Okay, wait, we're going to shrink it down to size. So this is going to be our winning symbol. All right, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And as you're like looking at it, you can always go back and change the color of these just by highlighting in between these. All right, so now that I know what my winning symbol is going to be, I'm going to choose all the other symbols to go around it that are going to look like they're spinning through the slot machine. All right, so now that I have this money symbol, I'm going to choose an email symbol. Want to try and keep them the same size. Um, because a lot of these symbols are goldish, I may end up changing these to contrast better. Probably go ahead and do that now. And now they're showing up a lot better. They're just a lot easier for me to read. Um, again, sticking to my brand colors. <laughs> All right. So I have the email symbol and then I'm going to choose a social media symbol. So I'll just do a uh, Twitter And just like kind of stick to like this same color layout or whatever. You can change uh, the colors of many elements by clicking the element and then just clicking this little square at the top. 
Uh, let's see. We can make some of the elements different colors though, so that there's more contrast. So we got the envelope for the email. We got the blue Twitter symbol. Now we can also add uh, a website symbol. Let's see. I'm just going to pick a random one. I don't want to make this too hard. So notice that like I'm placing symbols outside of these brown squares and I'm going to go over why in a minute, but this is really important. You need more symbols than what actually fits in this square to be on the page. All right, so we got a website symbol and then now I'm just going to choose one for books since I do write books and that's still on brand for me. Um, if you have not checked out any of my books, I highly recommend it. All right, so they may not all fit in the screen. As long as a piece of it is still in the screen, then you can highlight it. All right, so now that we have the symbols on lock, we're going to highlight the background squares only, group them, and then we're going to click the three dots and lock those in place because we don't want those to move while we're doing this. All right, so now we're going to drag down, so click, Click and drag down on these symbols and notice that the background is not highlighted because it is locked in place. In order for you to change this background now, you're going to have to click the actual squares and unlock them. You'll also have to unlock them one by one, even though they're grouped together. It won't do it as a group action unless you click the, in the open space around it. But if you click a specific one, it'll only lock that one. All right, so we're going to highlight these again. We're going to group them and then we're going to uh, duplicate it. Now, in duplicating it, you don't want them to be uh, lined up because you need it to like roll to be lined up. So I have one that's like starting off in the middle. And then I have another one that's going to kind of start off like this. And so now that I'm doing this, I know that I need to um, ungroup these so that I can like kind of rearrange them. So we're going to ungroup this one. Let's uh, drag these two symbols up and then we can drag. Uh, oh, no. Let's drag these uh, back down. So we'll just click undo. And then we're going to swap the place for the gold so that one of the golds is coming from the top. And so we want to make sure that the, for the orientation that the uh, oh, that the symbols are kind of coming from like different directions so that the rolling actually makes sense. All right. So now that we did that, we're going to group these again. And now we're going to uh, animate them. So we're going to click the little square of all of them, go to animate and click create an animation. And we're going to drag up and then drag back down and then kind of bounce it like a slot machine would do. And then you can click steady or you can click smooth. And try to keep your hand as steady as possible, right? I know it's kind of hard to do, um, but the more steady that you keep your hand, the smoother your animation is going to be. So I'm going to redo this again. So I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to drag it back down. And I'm going to... All right. I feel like that one is a lot smoother. It's still a little shaky, but it's a lot smoother. So now you can play with the speed of it to make it go faster. So we'll do a little bit faster. Because, you know, like when you do one of the slot machines, it, it moves pretty fast, right? So now that we did that one, we're going to do the same for this one. We're going to click animate. We're going to grab it from the bottom. Oh, okay. We're going to drag it back down. That one is not to my liking. So you might, you might have to do these a few times. All right, I'm going to bring this one back down to the bottom. 
All right, so we're gonna go to anime. Let's drag this up. Take our time. The slower you go, the better. You can always go back and speed it up later. All right, we're gonna do smooth and then increase the speed. We need them to kind of like line up at the same time. So now that we got that one, we got to do this last column. So click on that last column, go to anime, and then we're going to drag it up a little bit and then bring it back down. All right, smooth it out, speed it up. Speed it up a little bit more. All right, so now we can click done. And now we can add some white squares over. Or if the square is not going to be white, it needs to be the same color as whatever the background is going to be. My background is white, so that's what the color of these little rectangles are that I'm going to put on here to cover up the background. Well, not the background, but like the symbols outside of the square. And so now when I press play, they just look like they're spinning. Uh, now you can like add a, a border around it. So if you click shapes, click that square and make this shape transparent. And then now you can add a border. I'm going to make my border um, a different color. We're going to take that out. Uh, okay. And then just kind of drag it across to cover up the edges. All right, now we're going to lock these squares in place so that they're not moving. All right, and now you can add some text across the top. Change the color of your text so that you can actually read it and make sure that it's not just like random text. All right, so and we're just going to type what it is that you want to be like the, the call to action. So mine is going to say, uh, feeling lucky. All right, we're going to center our text. So feeling lucky, play to win, win big an hour, new giveaway. All right, so you can always, you know, dress it up more, add more elements to the background. Um, let's see, position, change the color of this text. All right, so like you can go to elements and add more stuff to the background and all of that jazz, but I don't gotta do all that. You can also animate your text by clicking the text and going to animate. And then doing like pop or swipe or breathe to make it get bigger. Uh, you could do the typewriter. I'm going to do the burst. All right. So, and now this is what it looks like. So, notice how there's a square right there covering that up. You always want to test them out. All right. So, let's see. Position. Backwards. So we're going to delete that square that's right there, and then we're going to bring the border back up. All right, so now we're done with our animation. Click share, click download, go to GIF, and then drag this down. This is going to control the size of your file. If it's over five megabytes, you're not going to be able to, uh, to download it. I mean, you could download it, but you won't be able to like upload it to an email service provider. So you want to make sure that your file is less than uh, five megabytes in the final download. 
And I know I said this is going to be a five minute tutorial. I didn't think it was going to take this long, but I wanted to make sure that you got everything that you needed. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop your questions down below. Um, I just thought that this is a really cute animation idea to do in Canva and nobody um, showed me and I couldn't find any video tutorials about it. And so uh, my client loved this idea and so did their email subscribers. So if you like and love this tutorial, click subscribe, like this video, drop a comment down below. Um, and, you know, I'll try to post more content like this and more Canva hacks if you like them. So once your GIF downloads, uh, you'll just be able to add it into your uh, email campaign as an image. So I'm going to open this file and I'll show you what it looks like. All right. And so this is what the GIF looks like when it's downloaded. And all you got to do is just plug it into your email campaign as an image and it'll work just the same. My GIF ended up downloaded as 4.5 megabytes. And so I don't have to do anything else to it. I could just plug it in. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to drop your questions down below. Um, leave a comment and ask me anything about this process. If you need me to clarify, if there's a button that you missed or something, just let me know and I'm happy to help. Um, as always, I'll see you.